talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Today we're going to install a onboard uh, circuit into that red Stratocaster right there. That was my first guitar. And uh, the circuit I've chosen is a simple transistor compressor. It's kind of an odd choice, right? I mean, with all the pedal options I have, why a compressor? Well, I'll tell you. When I was a kid, I, I had a practice amp and it was a PV Rage. I'm sure many of you had the PV Rage the early 2000s and it was not a lot of fun that amp and I didn't have any pedals my dad played guitar but he had never used a pedal before um, the closest thing we had to a distortion pedal or compression at all was a gain channel on a Princeton 112 Fender solid state amp and that gain was really the only window I had into what compressed tone is so let's talk a little bit about compressed tone. First, let's hear tone that's not so compressed. Now this uh, Klon clone will compress a little bit. But let's play very softly. Now you can hear that, but it's soft, right? Now with compression... I can hear everything, right? My notes, my quiet notes are suddenly louder, fuller, they're not dead. But it's also, it makes the neck more sensitive. So, you know, I liked Eddie Van Halen and Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and um, those guys had sustain for years and I found the closest thing I had to that was this Princeton 112 amp. So we went to the music store to get a guitar. It was a black Stratocaster. It was the first nice guitar I ever had. It was after this, this red one, which is a 1995 Squire. Not so nice, trust me. It's very hard to play. But anyway, we go to this music store, and it's two stories. And I'm playing, I think, like on a Line 6 solid state amp. I'm playing through it, and, you know, my notes are lasting forever. And it... to uh, ask the sales guy, I was like, what's a Marshall? I mean, this is how separated we were from everything. The internet wasn't what it is today. And um, so anyway, he's like, oh, let me show you, son. You know, he takes me to this Marshall room. It's where all the expensive tube amps were. And he turns it, he cranks it up, and he lets me play it. And it's kind of funny. I didn't think the Marshall was great. Like, um... Because when you're a kid like that, the mystique hasn't reached you. The other people's opinions haven't reached you. When I first heard a Marshall compared to like a Line 6 with a lot of compression, I was like, I'll take the solid state, man. It's easier for my, my hands to play. It's easier for my notes to ring out. So that's kind of my experience with, uh, with compression. And uh, that's why I've chosen a compressor to put into this red guitar. I always thought it would be neat, you know, when you're playing or you go to somebody's house and you're playing on their gear, it's nice to be able to have that extra aid of compression when you're playing on someone's amp that's unfamiliar, uh, for me at least. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to take a look at, and uh, then we'll try to do a little demo. Hello, and welcome to today's video. This was my first guitar. It is a Squire Stratocaster, and it's got Seymour Duncan hot rails in it. We're going to do a little mod to it. After uh, doing the boost kit on the other guitar, it got me thinking, what else can I put in a guitar that would make it sound excellent? Sorry for the lighting. Maybe I can put an actual picture here on the screen when editing. 
This is the circuit that I chose here. Um, it is the simplest transistor compressor I could find um, that doesn't use an ICE or op amp chip. This will be done all manually without strip board. Boy, oh boy, we got our work cut out for us. Let's get going. It's hard to believe that that's our circuit, that, and it sounds pretty good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna rewire that um, so that a jack is right here. Um, the output jack is here, connected to these wires, and then we'll give it a test. And then we'll put it in the guitar. All right. So listen to these notes. <laughs> back in 2000, 20 years ago probably. That's hard to believe. Anyhow, you can see he did a solderless installation, which works, but uh, I'm hopefully not gonna have to mess, wow, that's a loud ass bird. Anyway, I'm hoping not to have to mess with this. Uh, though I do find it kind of funny. And what I'm gonna do is replace this middle pot here with the dual gang. And the bottom pot is going to be this tone pot here, and then this tone pot is going to be the the squeeze ratio pot from the the pedal. All right, just an update. I want to make sure this is this route is going to be pretty big because I want to make sure all the wires can fit in. Since some of the wires are going to have to curl around the board, Let's see what the uh, wiring looks like on the guitar now that I've removed the pot. Yep, check out that mess. Uh, this is the old one, and the new one has a lot more shielding on it, so it should be good. It's going to be a little bit of work. Alright, so it's complete, and there's the circuit. It's screwed down in the corner there. Not ideal, but it works. And the battery hides underneath the route. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how the circuit works. Let's talk about the pieces first. We've got our guitar pickups, which is our input. Sound comes from the pickups. We've got our double pull, double throw switch. We've got our compressor circuit. We've got our battery, and we've got our stereo output jack. So let's talk about how the circuit gets power first. The negative terminal of the battery, which is ground, is attached to the switch terminal wire the ground terminal to the circuit board here okay think of this circuit right it has a space in the middle of it we need to close that space so when we insert a jack into this it closes that space and completes the circuit now the circuit is grounded to the negative terminal of the battery and it will start functioning. The positive terminal of the battery goes to the circuit board. The Since we've talked about how it gets power, now we can talk about the signal path. So the signal starts at the guitar and it goes to the middle terminal on the double pole double throw switch. These two terminals are linked 
and then this one right here is the output. This will actually go to our output jack. So basically, if it is switched upward, it will connect to these and these. The signal will travel through here, and it will go down here, through here, through here, through here, and so forth and so on until you get to the output jack. So it completely bypasses the circuit. So the next thing is, let's say the switch is flipped the other way. Now we've got these terminals connected. So it goes in and then it goes out to the PCB board. So it goes this way, up into the PCB board, then goes out of the PCB board here. So the signal travels like this from the guitar to this terminal through here all the way down goes into the circuit comes out of the circuit upward into the switch which is connected to the output and it goes to the output jack so you can either bypass the circuit entirely or you can activate circuit and send the signal through the circuit I hope that made sense. Um, it's kind of a messy drawing, but uh, I did my best this late at night. So, so I think we're finally ready for a demo. I'm gonna play clean through the amp, and I'll activate the circuit and deactivate the circuit, um, and let you know when I'm doing that, so you can hear the difference in the clean signal. All right, so it's finally finished and this video is taking a really long time for some reason just because life kind of got in the way so I apologize for that but uh, let's hear how it sounds so this is with the compression off okay compression on without compression. With compression. 